In this problem, we want to look at Lewis structures and recognize when they are drawn as equivalent structures and when they are inequivalent structures. Of course, the problem with drawing Lewis structures is that the electrons are traveling in their orbitals and we're trying to represent in a static way what has movement. So let's start with disulfur monoxide, S2O. So first we're going to do our calculation. Our electrons required will be our three atoms times eight for each atom, or 24. Sulfur is in group six, and oxygen is in group six. So our number of valence electrons is 18. Our shared pairs will be the difference between electrons required and valence electrons divided by two. This is going to give us 24 minus 18 divided by 2, or 3 shared pairs. Our lone pairs will be our valence electrons minus 2 times the number of shared pairs divided by 2. This will give us 18 minus the quantity 2 times 3, entire quantity divided by 2, which is equal to 6. So what you see is that we had 18 valence electrons and we put three groups of them in shared pairs and six groups of them into lone pairs. And of course, three plus six is equal to nine, which is 18 divided by two. Now let's get on to drawing our Lewis structures. We have three bonds, so the double bond can be between the two sulfurs or the sulfur and the oxygen. Now let's place our lone pairs. So for our sulfur on the left, it has two bonds, and we will give it two lone pairs. I'm going to draw the circle around that sulfur so we can count the number of electrons in the circle. And of course, we have two electrons from the double bond, three, four, five, six. So our formal charge for this sulfur is six minus six, or zero. The sulfur in the middle has three bonds, so it needs one lone pair. Sulfur is in group six, but within the circle, I have one, two from the lone pairs, and then three, four, five from half of each bond. So this sulfur has a plus one formal charge. The oxygen on the right side has six electrons from the lone pairs and a seventh from the bond, so its formal charge is group six, normally, minus seven electrons in the circle, which gives it a minus one formal charge. So to make things simpler to look at, I'm just going to write the formal charges above the two atoms that have formal charges. Now let me look at the structure on the right side. The sulfur on the left has six electrons from the lone pair and one from the bond, so its formal charge will be six minus seven or minus one. The sulfur in the middle has two electrons from the lone pair and then three bonds, so that's four, five, six. So we'll calculate its formal charge as six minus five or plus one. The oxygen on the right side is in group six, and there are six electrons in the circle, so the formal charge is zero. So now the question asks us, are the formal charges on each atom type the same? And the answer is no. In both structures, the middle sulfur has a positive formal charge, but in the structure on the left, it's our oxygen that has the minus formal charge, and in our structure on the right, it's our sulfur that has the minus formal charge. So our answer is no. Now finally, we want to know what is the SO bond order in S2O. And I will tell you that the structure on the left is a better representation. And that's because it is lower energy, because the minus one formal charge is on oxygen, and that's because oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. Therefore, it can bear the minus one charge better. So from this point on, we're going to ignore the structure on the right and focus only on our best structure. 
And what we see in that structure that is our best structure is one bond between sulfur and oxygen. All right, let's move on to the second part of this problem. Now we'd like to do the same process for SO3. So our electrons required is going to be our four atoms times eight, which is 32 electrons. Our valence electrons will be six for the sulfur and three times six for the three oxygens, so that is 24. Our shared pairs will be 32 minus 24 divided by two. That is going to give us four. And let me explain lone pairs a slightly different way to you to see if maybe this explanation will work. Our valence electrons, our number of valence electrons is 24. If I divide 24 by 2, I need 12 pairs of things. Those things can be shared pairs or lone pairs. I already have four shared pairs, so 12 minus 4 tells me I need eight lone pairs. Now let me draw my structures. I can have my double bond to the oxygen either to the top oxygen the right oxygen or the left oxygen. Now let me put my lone pairs around each of the oxygens. I don't need a lone pair on sulfur because it already has four bonds. So I've put my lone pairs around the left structure and now let me get my formal charges. This oxygen that I've circled has seven electrons in the circle. So 6 minus 7 gives it a minus 1 formal charge. This oxygen that I have now circled has 6 electrons in the circle. So 6 minus 6 gives it a 0 formal charge. And this new oxygen that I have circled has 7 electrons in the circle and is used to 6. So it has a minus 1 formal charge. And of course, we can't forget the sulfur. Sulfur is group six, but it has four electrons, one from each bond when I circle it, so it has a plus two formal charge. Now I trust you realize that any time I have a single bond between sulfur and oxygen, I'm gonna wind up giving it three lone pairs and a minus one formal charge. Anytime I have a double bond to oxygen, I'm going to wind up giving it two lone pairs and a zero formal charge. And the sulfur in all of these structures has four bonds to it, so it's going to have a plus two formal charge. So let me just fill the rest of that in for you. So I hope when you look at all these structures, you realize that in each structure, our sulfur is plus two formal charge. We have one oxygen that is zero formal charge and two oxygens that have a minus one formal charge. So are the formal charges on each atom type the same? In this case, our answer is yes. So that means our three structures are all equal energy representations. And it's inappropriate for us to lock the electrons in the double bond just between one set of sulfur and oxygen. In fact, that electron pair that's part of the pi bond, which you'll learn about later, can travel between all the oxygens. So in this case, since they're all equal energy, we have to average the bond order. So you notice that we have four bonds over three bonding regions. So our bond order is a little bit stronger than a single bond. It's 1.33 or 4 thirds. So getting to the last part of this, why is the sulfur oxygen bond order in S2O and the sulfur oxygen bond order in SO3 calculated differently the reason is because of the answer to this question. Are the formal charges on each type of atom the same? For S2O, our answer was no. So we focused on the best structure. For SO3, our answer was yes. 
So we averaged the bond order by having the number of bonds over the number of bonding regions, or if you like, the number of equivalent structures. The answer was three in both cases.